Welcome back to Taiwan Outlook. Our guest today is Mr. Keiju Tondup, and he's a member of the Tibetan Parliament in Exile. Uh, Keiju, we've been talking about uh, Taiwan's relationship with your government in exile. Right. And as you mentioned, mm -hmm. that starting from year 2000, uh, the relationship has been progressed. Right. What's the key uh, achievements that we have over the past yeah. few years? So le let me tell you, actually, um, when His Holiness first came here mm -hmm. in 1997, it was President Li Teng Hui mm -hmm. who was uh, primarily, primarily responsible for inviting His Holiness mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. That's right. So that year when His Holiness came, he, uh, we decided, we told President Li that we will not have anything to do with the Mon Mongolian Tibetan Affairs Commission, mm -hmm. which is uh, a remnant of uh, the KMT, yeah. right? So he said, okay, uh, we'll set up uh, the, uh, what do you call this, uh, Lai Lama F uh, Foundation. Mm -hmm. in, in, so that's how uh, direct, uh, what do you call the relationship started, okay? Yeah. So then in, in 2000, when he, 2001, when he visited again, right, uh, and uh, the DPP government went out of his way to invite him, and uh, he's, he's come back now as an old friend, mm -hmm. right? And most of the, uh, you see, DPP uh, people like uh, Annette Lu, we knew them from, from uh, when, when they were in, in the opposition from a yeah. long time ago, right? So uh, the DPP were very, uh, uh, what do you call, favorable to us, I can tell you, they, they started the, uh, what do you call this, um, uh, Taiwan-Tibet Exchange Church Foundation, Foundation. Yeah. specifically to improve relations and specifically to do projects inside India, right? And uh, uh, I, I can tell you uh, my personal experience is because uh, one day Yang Wang Meixing took me to uh, International Cooperation Development Fund, yeah. right? And introduced me to uh, the then, uh, what do you call this, uh, Director General, who was, uh, what do you call this? Uh, uh, Secretary General? Yeah, he was the Secretary General. Uh, so he, uh, he said, uh, how can I help you, right? So I said, well, something came up to my mind, and I said, we need a mobile hospital. Mm -hmm. So because we have uh, 130,000 Tibetans living in India, and uh, we need to, uh, to, to take this mobile hospital. So he said, okay, uh, you work with Siemens and give me a budget and uh, make a proposal. And uh, that's how, uh, you see, we started, right? Mm -hmm. And so they sponsored two mobile hospitals, one for North India and one for South India. And today, these mobile hospitals have, are going around all our different communities, not only helping Tibetans, but also Indians, right? Mm -hmm. And every year, doctors and nurses and volunteers go among the different uh, Tibetan communities and mm -hmm. work there. So this is, this is something which the Gumindang never even thought of or uh, even would think of doing, you mm -hmm. see? But then uh, the DBP government said, uh, start projects, help Tibetans in exile, do, do things uh, which, which are useful, which are more, uh, you see, uh, uh, ground real, you mm -hmm. see. But the thing is, it also touches upon your policy towards the ROC government or yes. the KNT government. Right. What's your, uh, your government's policy towards Taiwan? See, you, you, you see, uh, our, our policy towards Taiwan is, you see, apart from the Mongolian Tibetan <laughs> Affairs Commission, which you see, we, we have been trying to tell the Taiwan government to, uh, uh, to, to move, uh, to remove, right, uh, completely. So what the Taiwan government has done is they have downsized this, this thing and made a very small budget, and uh, they have stopped all their uh, meddling affairs among our community. So we have very good relations. We had very good relations mm -hmm. with the DBP right, yeah. government for eight years, right? Mm -hmm. And His Holiness came here twice during that period of time, right? We have cultural exchanges. And let me tell you, in Taiwan, there, there are over 200, uh, what do you call, religious institutions of here with mm -hmm. Tibetan monks. Yeah. And uh, Tibetan Buddhism is flourishing in, uh, in, in Taiwan. So this, right. is a, this is a very good thing. I think over the years there, there's been a growing support inside Taiwan for the Tibetan people. <coughs> and there are even festivals, you know, uh, yes, you know yes, music yes, festivals yes. Uh, uh, supporting, demonstrating their support yes, to the Tibetan right, people. Right. How do you see that kind of uh, support from civil societies in Taiwan? I, I think you see civil society in Taiwan is very responsive to, you see, whatever is Tibetan because they see Tibetan Buddhism, and then they see all these, uh, you see now the dialogue. You see, I can tell you, every year, a few thousand Taiwanese fly to Dharamsala in India. Right. You see, yeah? And I, I've seen two aircraft being chartered just to go to India to take people who go and listen to the Lai Lama giving mm -hmm. a religious sermon. So this, this is a very close kind of a relationship. Mm -hmm. That's why this is a relationship, because in March, His Holiness said, I want to go to Taiwan because I have so many friends there. 
So, yeah. so this is the kind of close relationship we've had. But now with uh, the new government mm -hmm. in, uh, uh, in, in, uh, in power, we, we are a bit apprehensive because the new government is very cool to us, you see. And uh, we, we don't know whether the policy which they had before will still continue today. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's yet to unfold. Yeah. Yes. But I think uh, President Ma has uh, on occasions said that uh, His Holiness would be welcome to, to visit mm -hmm. uh, Taiwan. But uh, whether the, uh, it would be um, feasible or not is another question. See? But before the uh, uh, during the campaign, actually, uh, President Show candidate Ma, yes, uh, he was quite critical yes. of Beijing's handling of yes. Yes. uprising in yes. Tibet. Yes. Do you think that he would change his policy afterwards? I, th I think it's difficult for him to change his policy, but you see, because as a, as a presidential candidate, he had to show the people of Taiwan that he supported human rights. Mm -hmm. So when there was this uh, uh, candlelight vigil at Peace Memorial, you see, the first person to come was, of course, the DPP candidate, Shea. But then uh, Mao was also told that he should also appear, so he came second, mm -hmm. right? But then uh, I think for Taiwan's future, it's very important for President Ma to be able to support human rights in, inside Tibet, because mm -hmm. this also considers uh, human rights in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. Of course, the human right, the 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 the, the, well, the KMT record on human rights in the mm -hmm. past has been very weak, right? Yeah. But then, uh, I I think the new KMT, which it should be called, should be different and should portray mm -hmm. a different image altogether on human rights. That's right. But uh, look to the future. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, that you're very concerned about the post-Olympic yes. uh, uh, situation, right. especially China's policy right. towards Beijing right. and towards Tibet. Right. What do you expect to, to see in the future? So I, I think uh, after o Olympics, China will automatically harden up its position, you see. They will think that they will become very proud and they'll say, we have uh, completed a very uh, successful Olympics, right? And we are the number one country now, and mm -hmm. uh, we can do anything what we want, right? And uh, we can dictate terms to the Dalai Lama, we can dictate terms to Taiwan. So mm -hmm. uh, why should we uh, give in to anything? Yeah. You see, I think Beijing will be uh, more stronger in terms of, uh, especially more repressive inside Tibet, mm -hmm. right? Beijing will not give in, I don't think, uh, to, to anything. In, in, uh, to Taiwan, I think, is because Beijing is playing a game vis-a-vis -vis the U.S. Mm -hmm. You see, this is, this is a sphere of uh, influence which they, which they need and which they need to win over. You mm -hmm. see, this is something which they think is it's, uh, something which they have to gain back. Mm -hmm. But as you are aware of, that China's policy is always a united front strategy. Yes. Try to divide uh, your, its opponents yes. and try to you know, separate the forces. Yes. So are you afraid that China will try to divide uh, the relationship between Taiwan and Tibet? I, I think that is already partly happening. You see, mm -hmm, because really? the Guomindang coming back in power have automatically said, uh, okay, we keep everything on Tibet uh, on the burner, meaning uh, we don't want to have uh, anything to do with them. We do because uh, many of the Guomindang uh, or the people say cross-strait relations is most important and nothing to do with Tibetans. Mm -hmm. So they do not want to aggravate China. In terms. So I think it's already happening. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, in future, uh, His Holiness will not be allowed to come to uh, Taiwan. Taiwan because uh, China will protest and I China see. will make this uh, a reason to say if you want better relations keep the Dalai Lama out of Taiwan. So you think our government will be uh, giving in uh, on these issues? Oh definitely, <laughs> definitely. I, th I think this government now will give in to, 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 to most things because they, wa they, they, they want better relations at, at I think at any price. Yeah. You see? But do you think that at the end uh, this kind of talks between uh, your government and the Beijing authorities now is the dead end. There will be no way that we can have a breakthrough. I think it's difficult for uh, Beijing government because Beijing government, the people who are dealing with us as the United Front, right? And the United Front has a vested interest inside Tibet. So no matter what the central government tries, the United Front will always say, uh, we'll try and sabotage these talks. So because they are the dealing officer with the Tibetan group, right? So they, they always want uh, to, to protect their interest and to put aside any settlement with the central government and, and uh, his holiness. So uh, do you think that uh, in the end, uh, time will be on your side or on Beijing's side? I, I think uh, you see, uh, we, we Tibetans should not be impatient because mm -hmm. uh, China is changing very fast, right? And uh, I think uh, you see in the uh, 80s, they talked about uh, uh, economic reform mm -hmm. and opening up. 
And uh, I always tell them that with that, you have to add political reform, mm -hmm. you see. And I think without some sort of political reform in China, uh, they, they will have more problems. So I think uh, we can wait to be patient because things will automatically change and are changing mm -hmm. because you see every, every year in China, there are some people are rioting and saying things. They want more freedom, right? That's right. right. So thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tondo. Professor thank Lo, you. it's a pleasure to be here today. Thank you. Wish you all the best. All right, thank you. And that's Mr. Keiju Tondo, a member of the Tibetan Parliament Exile. And thank you for watching Taiwan Outlook, and see you next week.